is an advisor uh, to the Tip County Co-op. Uh, he is here to, as buyer invitation, uh, not only as uh, uh, a metal detector and hunter, but to show us his toys. Uh, and they're they're more than we realized. Yeah. I mean, not just the number. I mean, the the, the work is beautiful. If, if you get tired of these, I, these are going on display with the others. I, I brought some in to display. So there's some large ones in the museum. I saw the tank. Uh, the, the tanks back there. The excavators back there. Uh, three quarter ton Chevrolet truck with a camper, pull out camper, it's all back there. If it doesn't get in the glass case and marked up, the tank may not be there anymore. Well, that's, <laughs> some of these small ones are going in the glass case. True, sir. But, and, and oh, I brought excuse me, will, will you answer questions about pruning and planting when you're through? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't have time, then come out of the co-op. Oh, we got time. Got time. But uh, I told y'all I'm going to get tired of hearing me. Because I could talk about different passions I have for as long as y'all have the meetings, because I have a lot of different passions. I talked a little bit about metal detecting, Civil War relics, doing a lot of research with Civil War, Kibbe County and surrounding areas the last time I was here. And somebody mentioned about the wooden toys, that was what I was supposed to bring, but it was raining that day, and I, even though these have been sealed and clear coated, rain spots them up. So I waited. Today, I'll talk a little bit about what I enjoy doing that keeps me out of the house, away from the TV, uh, away from the telephone, away from my wife. <laughs> uh, whenever I need to be, I go out to my wood shop. And I started this about seven years ago. We were at the Mid-South Fair, and we were walking around all the little displays, and this guy had a saw there, and it was an RBI Hawk, a variable speed, 3600, got a 36-inch throat on it. Uh, I liked it, and I told Pam, we were walking around, I said, boy, I'd like to have one of those. For Christmas that year, she got me an RBI fret saw. And if you've never seen fret work, this is what I started doing. This is called fret work. And it's, you take a pattern, you drill, a, 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 I think it's like a 336, it's a real small hole, and you drill a hole in there and, and run your saw blade through it, fasten it down, cut out the little piece and move to the next hole. Somebody said, well, it's got to be a small blade. Can you see that? That's what I had to do, too. That is my saw blade. Now I'm passing around because you can't see it. But that's actually one of the larger ones. That's, that's what's known as a number two. They go all the way down to a double alt saw blade that is smaller than dental floss. And so I started making these little cutouts. And I made cutouts of Mississippi, and I made cutouts of, of Ole Miss, and Miss, you know, different cutouts. Well, I was looking in a book, and of course, my father worked for the highway department for 37 years in Bend County, and he ran every type of construction equipment that you could think of. And I, I was looking at a little book, and they had plans to build construction equipment. And I looked, and I said, well, that shouldn't be that hard. But whenever I got the plan, and this is, this is the latest one I've done, when I got the plans, I did not realize it was like building a house. These are the blueprints to build the toys that I built. There's actually, this is for the skid loader, there's actually eight pages of blueprints, and it goes, I mean, you can look, it goes into pretty detail, where you have to use, you know, somebody told me a long time ago, you measure twice, and you do what? <laughs> On this thing, you better measure four times, and then measure again before you cut. Uh, <laughs> Because you can make a mistake, and, and you wouldn't think a sixteenth of an inch is that much whenever you're building something larger. But whenever you mess up by a sixteenth of an inch on the smaller stuff, it will not work. So I started building construction equipment. Uh, first thing I built, this is actually the first thing I built. This is a John Deere motor grader. Uh, Daddy ran one of these for years and years and years. What's interesting about these toys that's unique from others, they all have... Working part. Everything, uh, I've got a pen, I can pull this pen right here. My blade, I mean, it, it, and, and it, it, it's got your tilt in it, everything works on it. Mm -hmm. And it, it's all put together, and now I have to have my glasses. But it's all put together with, El, with a Gorilla Glue, and my hydraulics are made out of dowel rods. 
I made a little jig to where I can put the dowel rod, clamp it in, drill through the dowel rod, and use another smaller dowel to, to make my hydraulics. Uh, I keep up, somebody asked me about the time, or somebody, and somebody else asked me about something. I keep up with my time. How long do you think it would take to build something like this? A long time. Long time. <laughs> Fifty hours. You're pretty close, Miss Billy. It took me 48 hours to build that. Uh, the wheels, uh, Miss Nita asked me about bringing this. Is, to me, this is the ugliest thing I've got. <laughs> you know why it's ugly to me? Nobody has a clue, do they? I painted it. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what to paint. I did, I, I, this was my first and last piece of wood to paint. I'll never paint another piece of wood. I like to use everything natural. Uh, I get most of my wood from Johnson's Hardwoods up in Walnut. Uh, a lot of the stuff I get, I buy, I just buy like a scrap pile of it. Because anything that I, I mean, most of the stuff I use is probably not over two foot long. Uh, most of the material I use is hardwood. The only thing, now there, I do use a lot, this is a little 34 coupe. This is made out of sassafras. Sassafras is a very pretty wood. It's also a soft wood. But boy, it smells good in that shop whenever you're sitting on it. You know how, it, it's got the same cedar and sassafras. You know, they got a good smell. smell. Yes, ma'am. It Fruit. doesn't smell. Fruit. I sealed it. Uh, but, but this, I mean, this took like 30 hours to be. The first set of wheels, I took a lathe and I made my own wheels. It took me almost two and a half hours to make one wheel. And my mother didn't raise no silly person. I got on the internet and looked, you can buy these tires for 89 cents a piece. I don't know who, some little small child in Japan is probably turning them like crazy. But I decided it's a whole lot easier for me to buy these tires. Now, a lot of the tires, like uh, on the skid loader, these tires I have to make. Uh, this is actually a left side, a right side, and I've got a little jig. Of course, when you get to work with wood, you can use a lot of, you can make a lot of your own jigs. It sort of cuts the time in half. And it's actually got 108 pieces of walnut in each tire. That's been, it's cut at an angle, they're glued together. Uh, I have to hone out the inside of the wheels and everything, but, but this is individual tires. I've got a Ferris wheel, and it's probably, it took me, I think it was 118 hours to build a Ferris wheel. It doesn't move very far. My wife told me I could get rid of everything else that I've made, but the Ferris wheel is hers. Uh, I put a little one, I put a little one third horsepower motor on it, and it actually turns three revolutions a minute. Uh, that has taken me longer than anything to cut out. Uh, whenever, as I'm cutting these and I'm gluing them, I've got to have something to do, so what I do, this is my fret work, and I just I just start sawing. I like to fish. Uh, if you'll notice, this is a man fishing in the water, and it's got that, the edge of the lake, and it's got the, the, oh, the silhouette of the lake in the water. Uh, which me being sort of an outdoorsman, I like doing deer. Uh, the frog in the lily pads. We have a toy poodle who is just like a third child to us. You can even take a picture and get somebody to put it on a thing and you can make the picture of your toy poodle. Or, depending on whether you're a Northeast or a Ripley fan, you can always make a tiger. And, and I guess what's interesting about this, you don't have to buy the frame because I made the frame and, and everything with it. And this is, this is what I call my, my piddle work while all this is, is gluing. Uh, somebody asked me about selling them. I do sell them. Uh, uh, Mr. Bobby Martin really liked a, a fire engine I had. I wanted a new metal detector. So we came to an agreement. Uh, don't sell many of them because minimum labor, labor is what? Is it six seventy or seven seven dollars? Seven fifty five, isn't it? All right, if you figure in, uh, like the delivery truck, the delivery truck took me 38 hours to build. And it's got your ramp. I mean, it's, it's got your load ramp that comes out. Uh, it's, a, it's real hard to do, but the door will actually raise and lower. 
I mean, it's a little bonesome, but it, it doesn't raise the mower. Uh, in 35 hours to build, it's seven dollars an hour. You know, three hundred, three hundred fifty dollars. And you don't find a lot of people that, that's willing to to give three hundred fifty dollars. And but it's like everything else. If you've ever seen anybody that made wooden furniture, or uh, wooden wooden rockers, you know, they're higher. Anything is handmade. But like I said, I don't have to get, now Pam tells me sometimes I have to get rid of them because <laughs> I've got over a hundred of these in the house. I built a trade cabinet around the, our living room. I've got two bookcases that's full of them. Uh, they're, in, they're in every little nook and cranny. But uh, I, I just keep them. I enjoy it. Uh, of course, whenever you fiddle, you know, a lot of things can be made out of wood. <laughs> Steamboat whistle. You ever heard frogs at night? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, everybody know about Noah's Ark? What was in Noah's Ark? Noah and eight souls. <laughs> All the animals were in Noah's Ark. <laughs> oh, now you talking about something hard to do. You see the little green snake that's right here? On the, if I take them out, I can't really get them back in. But there's a little green snake on the bottom of that. See it, see, it. see it right down there right here? I sure do. You're cutting that out, and you get it almost cut, and that saw blade throws that snake out in a wood shop that's full of about that much sawdust. You don't find it. So you cut another one. I got smart. I took a piece of uh, duct tape and doubled it up and stuck it on a piece of cardboard on top of it, so whenever it flipped up that time, it stuck that duct tape, and that's how I found the snake. But uh, if you look at different things you can build out of wood, you'd never think that would be wood. This is not one size fits all. This was made for Tim's head. <laughs> but this is made out of green sycamore on a wood lathe, and then to get the shape in it, I put rubber bands on it and put it in water. Okay, can we please, we need the picture because nobody can say, no, he can say half. And I, I mean, it's light. But that's actually a, a sixteenth of an inch thick on a wood lathe. No. Put it on my they won't hurt you. Pass it on. Put it on down. Yeah. But. Thank you. Make my picture. Excuse me. Nobody would believe this without a picture. I mean, we just got to get it in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you like what you saw while you making it? No, yeah, let's try it again. Okay, please. To capture all the beauty, it takes two shots. I am on the inside. <laughs> I thought it was only skin deep. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's smiles. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. But, yeah. I like that. But the, the both hands, I think, would be a good idea. But then, I mean, at, at Christmas time, of course, Christmas ornaments. Uh, these are actually, people say, well, how in the world did you cut that? These are actually two different pieces that are cut out to where they'll slide together. Pam likes my woodworking now because most time at Christmas she gets something that's out of wood. I've started making, she gets a different one of these every year. Uh, we're pretty soon we're going to have to buy a bigger tree. But a couple of years ago she gave me, I don't know whenever I picked this up, this is a good one, I think you know. Well, you can't see it. She gave me a little wood burner with my name on it. Says handcrafted by Tim Deacon. Plug it in, and that way I, I can sort of personalize every piece that I build. Can it sit on the airplane? It's not on the airplane. It could have been a uh, little German by wing. I brought this up. They put the disc play case, but it's actually too big. So. That one like a red baron. It is like a red baron. <laughs> All right. It is exactly like a red baron. It's even got, if you look, it's got the little dual machine guns up underneath the wing. But everything is to scale. Most everything that you look at whenever you build it is like to, to a sixteenth of a scale. The Jeep may have one. But now the Jeep, I mean, you look at the Jeep, 
It's got you axe and your shovel. Now it's got my name on there. But it's got you all your four-wheel drive shafts, your muffler and everything. Everything is pretty much detailed. Let's see. A lot of the little baskets. This is actually made out of walnut and poplar. And you just you go through and you get your design, solid base, then you cut out your each one's glued together. And this, I mean, it's it's just it's pretty heavy, but it's but you know it's what I carry all my stuff in. Uh, you say glued together, you mean a piece is all the way around the on the layer, but like layer, you don't need to tie pieces, do you? No, it's it's just one. That's one whole piece of wood that's been cut out, mm -hmm. and it's cut out from the inside and the outside. Uh -huh. And then those pieces are glued. Mm. So that's, that's actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's actually eight pieces. Mm. That's glued together. Mm -hmm. But I've, I've shipped, I've, I've mailed some, I've mailed some pieces as far away as Oklahoma. People have bought them. Uh, not very many. And I told them whenever they, they purchased them, I said, I'm not sure because as far as shipping, there's a lot of small things that can get broke. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, before I got out, I had to glue two pieces. I carry super glue in my pocket whenever I bring them out, because most of the time the first thing that gets broke off are either the little side view mirror or something small. Yeah. But uh, I just it's something I enjoy doing. I like getting out, working in the wood shop, uh, passing the time of day. There's nothing worth watching on TV anymore, so it gives me something to do. Uh, now that's that's about. I mean, there's not a whole lot you can say. Uh, a lot of the wood. Now I didn't bring it. I've got a high track dozer that's got like the tracks and everything with the rippers on it. It's got 29 different types of wood on it. And I told somebody one time if they could name all 29 different types, I'd give them the dozer. Nobody's done it yet. <laughs> because a lot of the wood that I get, especially whenever you're making small things, uh, anybody ever seen that kind of wood? Where is that? No, sir, that's leopard wood. Well, I was going to say that. Huh? Now, bird's, eye maple, <laughs> bird's eye maple does look like this, but it's not near as, as small on print. Okay, uh, where'd it come from? It's this not, not locally. South America. South America. Yeah. A lot of wood I get, I, I buy on eBay. Mm. Uh, Paul Amaro. Uh, actually, a lot of this is used for like my headlights and my brake lights on a lot of the, the where you need a different color. And that's why I said I, I won't paint any more because you can go through and you can find any, any of the wood. Uh, zebra wood from Africa. It, and if I hadn't, I've got different, a lot of times I make my seats out of zebra wood because it looks like it's giving that little stripe. And I use zebra wood. Uh, Do you ever use any wood from the colonial tree? I haven't. I've got a couple of growing in my yard and polonia trees. That's bird's eye. Oh, yeah. But the polonia was more for medicinal purposes than, than actually wood. Uh, I've used, of course, everybody knows about the, the Bodoc Osage orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've used it one time and it burned three planar blades. <laughs> <laughs> That's how hard it is. The same way with persimmon. Uh, the little golf cart. These are actually persimmon, and you've got you've got different you've got your wedges and you've got your your putter and your drivers, but this is actually the little heads of these are made out of persimmon. Really, too. Yeah, real wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah, in Memphis they use persimmon. In they use it in real clubs, and I used them on mine. Yeah. So, but I mean, this is nothing more than a dowel rod that I've taken and sanded down. So, it, it it's a lot of the detail work. These weren't actually in the plan, but I decided to make some clubs just to go with the golf cart. Um, is that a regular putter or a belly putter? I think it's, a, it's just a regular. <laughs> Not the long belly putter. Huh? No, it, it's just a regular putter. <laughs> but I mean, it, they're fun to do. Uh, a lot of things, which now a lot of the gifts that, that my family get at Christmas are gifts that I've made. Uh, I use a lot, lot more of, of my homemade gifts now than I do. Uh, does anybody have any, any questions about anything? I mean, 
like I said, you, it, it took me a lot longer when I first started doing this. But when I started making jigs for like my wheels, uh, when I started making jigs for, for to hold the, the dowels in to make the hydraulic cylinder, it made it go a little, a little bit quicker. What is that 34? Is that a Chevy? That's a Chevy. Chevy too. <laughs> and I, I've got them. I've all, I've got them all the way down to a 1917 uh, A model truck. And and. How big do these pieces of wood that you buy? Like, what's your plug? Your tongue has to go. When I buy them, how big? Uh, the sassafras, I buy an eight foot board. Mm -hmm. And that's all we had because I think he just cuts that sassafras mm -hmm. for me because I'll just go up there and say, if you got any, he'll say no or yes. Mm -hmm. And the scraps, like I said, the, probably the biggest thing I use is probably three foot long. Mm -hmm. And y'all have to know about my shop too. Mm -hmm. My shop started out as a 24 by 16 inch. A 16 foot building. My wife took 12 foot of that. So now I have a 12 foot by 16 foot building that, that's my wood shop. Uh, I've got a planer, I've got a drill press, I've got a table saw, I've got a band saw, I've got a lathe, I've got all the tools. But when I get ready to plant a, a piece of wood, I have to pull the planer out from the wall, put it in the middle of the shop, move stuff away so I can run around and plane, and then stick it back so i got room to walk. Uh, I've got a cubby hole, and like I said, now I don't throw any wood away. Uh, it came out of the middle school when they took out the wooden lockers they had in the middle school. I've got about a 12 foot section of that locker on my wall, and I've got walnut, cherry, I've got every, everything filled up. And I save wood. I mean, I guess I'm a hoarder, I don't know, but, but I don't throw any wood away because eventually I might have a use for it. Mm -hmm. Where do you keep your wood? Not in that. In, not in there. Not in the shop. Mm -hmm. It's on the wall. Mm -hmm. It's just it's out of the way. It's on the wall. Uh, it's, some of it's underneath it, but yeah, it's there. Well, the next time Brandon Payne <coughs> comes to town, would you like for me to work up a deal with him and you and help him clean out his shop out here? He got lots of walnut. Yeah. I, I'll talk to him. I really wish you could. Use some of that stuff. Well, uh, if it's a piece that I can get a, a I mean, like the, the little trailer here. Yes. That's actually three pieces of walnut glued together. <laughs> so, you know, but I can I use all pieces of it. I have some lumber that you're welcome to if you can use any of it. Well, I, I can always use lumber. I took it down a 120 year old house and. I sold some of it, but I've still got two thirds of it stacked in the. Is it like hard? Is it like hard pine or? Uh, I don't think there's any hard pine there. There's some 120 year old uh, bead board. Uh, it's uh, three eighths inch thick mm -hmm. and six inches wide with a design down the middle. Got tons of that stuff. It's 120 years old. <laughs> I mean, you're welcome. A lot of people. A lot of people like. Picture frame the stuff out of, out of the older wood. I've got some old barn board, but most of that is warped. It's been out in the rain a couple of years. So. But now, I, 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 different people, uh, people come to me, of course, when Mr. Lon Pickens, whenever he did all his antique stuff, he would have a piece of what I call the scroll work on some of his little, and he could not find another piece. Uh, if you can, and, and the throat on this saw is 36 inches wide. If you can draw something, I can get it in my saw, I can cut it out. Uh, I just got through making rocking chair legs. This uh, lady in Ashland. And I don't know how these people find out about it, but she drove all the way over here with her rocking chair leg, and she wanted to know if I could cut another one out. Well, as long as I've got something to go by, and I can get it inside my shop, and my daughter sort of goes overboard. Well, you're, you're <laughs> welcome to have any of that lumber I've got. I, back there. I've got I wouldn't mind. Of, I mean, I could use I, I always use some of it. I'll, I'll come look at it sometime. Okay. We'll figure out where you, where you are now, but I'll look at it. All right. But Sarah came up. I don't have, you, have any of you ever seen a hammock bed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the size of a full size bed, but it's actually a hammock that you put outside underneath an arbor. Mm -hmm. Well, she saw it on the internet somewhere, and of course, she thinks Daddy can do it, so Daddy did it. <laughs> but he didn't do it at the shop, he had to do it out in the hot carport. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I mean, people come up all the time with, with different different things. Uh, I do a lot of antique, uh, older stuff. 
Do you want do you want to advertise that in some way? No, sir. <laughs> Thank you, though. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do enough without advertising. Pam, did you make your ornaments to sell? Uh, not many of them. Uh, you remember a couple years ago, Miss Marnell, when they had the ornament tree at the bank? Yeah. All right, I made a dozen ornaments to go on that tree. Uh, I, I made a golf cart to auction off at the uh, Rotary Club. I made a, a, a little, I call it a, you play it. I'll think of it in a minute, y'all. Help me. Guitar. Dulcimer. A dulcimer. I made a dulcimer to auction. I, I mean, different things. A lot of times I'll, I'll make something that if people, which it, it was sort of, I don't know, I made, I, I auctioned off the golf cart at Rotary Club because at the time he was having to do something to raise money for the polio. Well, I, you know, me being the person I am, I'm thinking, well, I'll just auction this off and I'll have some fair money. Needless to say, I didn't get any of the money. They gave, it went for like about $175, dollars they donated all the polio. So it went for a good cause. Yeah. So I'm all for it. But uh, it's just, yes, sir. You said you use Gorilla Blue? Gorilla Blue. Uh, you know, it expands when you, that, do you just use a tiny bit of it? You, you remember that <laughs> Brill Cream? About a dab do you? But now the Gorilla Glue, when it gets hard, Mr. Tommy Sands, you can take a knife and you cut it. And another good thing about the Gorilla Glue, which my wife don't need to know this, but if you make a mistake, you can put that piece of wood in the microwave for about 20 seconds and heat it. No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> No, we use fin fingernail polish remover. But you can, I mean, even, even epoxy Elmer's glue, if it's carbon wood glue, don't put it in the oven because it'll start baking it, but you can put it in the microwave and loosen it up. And there's been many a time I've had to stick a piece of wood in the microwave, especially when she wasn't home. <laughs> well, I helped I help my daughter make dollhouse furniture just out of balsa wood. Yep. Uh, and if you're holding a piece for it to set up and then you turn loose and it don't, uh, I mean, you, you got it, and we use Pat's fingernail polish remover, just yeah. like, or like that, get your fingers off of it. <laughs> uh, well, that's one of the super glue, though, wasn't it? Yeah, super glue. Yeah. And I, my, my, the super glue is just for real quick patches, because, it, like I said, the, I had to glue this back on a while ago, and then I had to glue one of my little side rails on the, on the Jeep, because it, it, invariably, if you haul these things, and I, I, that's why I, whenever somebody asks about helping get them out, the way I've got them put in there, they're in there in a certain way, and I know exactly how to pick them up. I wouldn't, but but I just, they're sort of like, Pam says I take better care of these than I do her. <laughs> it's hard to dust them because you have to be real careful. That uh, air dust, I, I use air dust on them. Uh, but used to, she would try to dust them, I'd get mad, so she doesn't dust at all. I have to pick up dust around every one of them when they get dusted. But that's all I have. Y'all are welcome to come up and look at them. Like I said, I've got some more in there, some of my bigger pieces. If y'all want to know how long are they going to be on display in the museum? Two Three months. I guess they must need to help me come get them. I don't know. But that I brought some, and she said, well, that's not enough to fill up the cases, so I brought a few more. And we're just going to put, put these in, inside. Everything but the airplane is too big to fit. But I, if, if y'all want to come out sometime, or if y'all do have a problem, if y'all need... Some kind of wood or you know, something cut. If you'll get me a pattern, I can cut it. Do you have do you have any inclination that you might like to join the Sons of Confederate Veterans uh, uh, old time arts and crafts program in twenty fourteen? If I yeah, if I knew about it. Uh, well, that's all they told us. Uh, they're they're looking for people to uh, in a in private to fairgrounds or something, but they want to demonstrate the old way of doing things. They're looking for craftsmen and people like that. Well, I, I don't know if it's the old way of doing it or not, but it's... it's uh, that's all right. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, 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 I can bring a little thing. soft there and set up. I mean, because it's pretty portable. Now, that's all I have. I'm not going to keep y'all as long as I did the other day, because I know we talked <laughs> <laughs> we, We've got 15 minutes for agricultural questions. Do you have any? <laughs>